And I just wanted to show you what the popcorn and cranberry earrings look like. I think they're kind of cute. They would make, they would complete an outfit with an ugly Christmas sweater. They're just meant to be fun. So thanks for joining me and Merry Christmas and take care. Hi and welcome. Happy Saturday. This is Saturday, December 14th. I hope you had a good Friday the 13th yesterday. Uh, I'm doing a different kind of video for me today, uh, and it's going to be polymer clay. I was going to go to my Adirondack Polymer Clay Guild meeting in Queensbury, New York, but it seemed like, I don't know, it's just not that, a good time of year. So I thought I would take what I packed up to work on there and show you. Um, I don't like to call my uh, crafting videos tutorials. It's more of a craft with me video and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to change the angle of my camera and get started on my project. I hope you enjoy it. See you in a minute. Actually, a second for you. Okay, so welcome again. This is my popcorn and cranberries that I am making to make little ornaments for my Christmas tree. And as you can see, um, I think they look pretty lifelike. Um, my popcorn is actually um, Sculpey 3 white. I figured I had it and I might as well use it. And it's got a little bit of ivory craft paint on it just dabbed here and there to give it shadow and um, I will show you the package just so and as you can see I got it from poly clay play it was a free bar of white clay that they offered so I took them up on it so there's the white that I used and then my cranberries which I think are beautiful. I made with Primo and this is pomegranate and I also used in that mix another Primo and that is burnt umber. So yeah um, as you can see I have just, these are baked, and I've varnished the cranberries, and what I use to varnish is Minwax Polyacrylic in this polycrylic, which is a water-based um, finish, and it's soap and water cleanup, which I really like. So, let me show you how I made these and I will take you straight through my process with my varnish. And like I said, not a tutorial, just a craft with me. And I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so I have a silicone mat and I also have a probably f maybe, f I don't know, made in China, China tile that you can get at Home Depot. This has the numbers B3 on it. So it's just a glazed ceramic tile. And I will start with a piece of popcorn. I'm going to pull my tile back out because I don't want to cut on my silicone mat. Okay, so I have a stiff bladed short blade, tissue blade that I use when I just cut through the blocks because it gives me a little more control. And I don't need a whole lot. I probably don't even really need this much. And I can probably make a couple of pieces of popcorn with this. Now to roll it out, I do have a pasta machine with a motor because I've had surgery on both of my hands 
and they, neither of my hands works that well. But for this, I'm using such small pieces of clay that oops, I just use the roller to make it thin enough that I can move it around. And then I just condition it with my fingers. And this is a nice fresh block of clay that I got from Poly Clay Plays. So it conditions really easily. And for having hand issues, Sculpey 3 is pretty soft. Um, not recommended if you're making things to sell or, or thin pieces because it has a tendency to be brittle and to break easier than Primo, which is most clay artists preferred um, clay. And if you can hear the dogs in the background and the kids, that's my normal video background. That's not usually. Um, anyway, so I didn't do this. For the most part, I just break pieces off and make little balls. If you're a person that needs to measure and have everything, you know, everything be the same size, then use a cutter. And that way you get little balls of the same size to work with. Now this cutter will give me very small balls. Um, so I could even make little popcorn cranberry earrings um, for Christmas. Um, using this method. And all I did was take three balls and put them together. And then I took a fourth ball and it doesn't even have to be um, precisely balls because popcorn isn't precise but there you kind of have the shape of a piece of popcorn. And then I just take my little tool, your tool of choice. This is a silicone tip tool to start with. And I just kind of press it. And if you leave little marks in it, hey, that's fine. Popcorn has got little marks in it. And you just kind of seal these pieces together, which is kind of fun. <sighs> Yep, that's Wally playing with his toy. It's a good thing I love Wally. So, there's that. And then you can even take the opposite end of the tool and just kind of put little divots in the bottom where it shows your popcorn kind of turned inside out, your little kernel. Put your little pieces back together. And voila. Kind of a battered little piece of popcorn. <laughs> okay. And as usual, I have a little piece of exotic fiber in there that I will remove. And let me corral the dogs. Okay, dogs are dealt with. So now I'm going to do it the way I normally do it. And I just took a little piece and that's too big. So I'm just going to break it in half, roll that around. And you can see that's a little bit bigger of a ball than that was. That's my original. So those are even still a little too big. And this is how I do it. You know, I get one the way I like it. And then I kind of just play. And I will probably use a matte glaze on the popcorn. I just haven't gotten there yet. So there's three. A little bit more than that. And there's that one. And I just kind of shape it down into popcorn. And I may just do one more. So I take a little bit. 
and take a little bit more. And they're different sizes because not all kernels pop up to be the same size, which is good, I guess. And then I'll just take that little bit that was left and put that on top. And there I have three pieces of popcorn out of a piece of clay that was that big. So then I'm going to, this time I'll take my ball stylus instead of my silicone tool. And I'll just take this piece and kind of seal these edges. And I'll go in different directions um, because I don't want it to be um, precise or to all look the same. I mean, you can do it that way if you want. It's just I'm making popcorn. So it doesn't have to be a perfect seam because I don't think popcorn is perfect. And then I can just do my little divots on the bottom sections that have popped up and made beautiful popcorn. And then, you know, if you want those um, lacy ends, you can do this and kind of make it look a little more like popcorn, I suppose, uh, because you could put some brown in the center and show the remains of the kernel. You could even do that with a piece of brown clay if, or, you know, caramel colored clay if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, this is a very easy project, depending on how big, I guess, you want your strand of popcorn and cranberries to be, because uh, this it could actually be a very large pro project. I was thinking about doing these like a garland and stringing them in one consecutive type of line, but I've decided that that might be a little over ambitious this close to Christmas. And um, I think what I'm going to do is hang these like dangles, um, a drop ornament, if you will. So just in the space of sitting here, I've got my popcorn in pretty good condition to um, do the whole in the center, I just use my needle tool. You could use a toothpick. Um, that would be fine. But I find that, if, and you can probably see the hole there, because even for popcorn, the hole doesn't have to be in the same as every, because you don't want them to actually hang in a straight line. Um, so I just go from the top and skewer it and then I find the hole I made on the other end and I just kind of smooth out that hole. So push it through, push it through. And this is the project I was taking with me to my guild meeting today to work on. So I just figured I would share it with you. Um, we were all doing our own thing, just a winter or a Christmas project. So I thought my uh, cranberry and popcorn strand would kind of be fun. And that's the popcorn. So now, how about the cranberries? And I will bring them over and show them to you. Hard in my hands. It's winter in upstate New York and my skin is dry. But here are my cranberries. And like I said, I'm using pomegranate, primo, and for umber, which is that brown color. Now for this, you don't need a lot of clay either. Depend well, depending on how much, how many cranberries you want to make, but I'm just going to use that little bit, and for the brown, I have this little bit left from the last time I used it, and you can see how much is still left here. I used very little. I just took, actually, that little bit off that corner 
and there's still that much left. So let me just, now I, I'm going to use this smaller section and I am going to condition it the same way I conditioned the white. This Primo is also pretty soft. It's not too bad. Red is tough because it's going to leave color on everything, which is why I did the popcorn first because I didn't want to put the red tint into my pink popcorn. And when I did this yesterday, I actually laid the brown next to the red and then I ran it through my pasta machine a few times. You don't have to do that. You can um, just mix it in with your hands. Um, and this is a little bit stiffer than Sculpey, so it's taking me a little bit more work with my hands to actually condition it. I'm going to move my tile out of the way so I can use my silicone mat. I'm just going to... And I'm just doing this to condition my clay. Nothing fancy, um, just flattening it, moving the molecules around, heating it up, softening it, getting it ready to play. So as you can see, there's some brown going through this and all I'm gonna do is fold it over Squish it some, because I don't want a bunch of air in it, even in just my lump. And then all I'm going to do is take a cranberry-sized chunk, and maybe this is a little cranberry, and I'm going to roll it in a ball. doesn't have to be a perfect ball, even. And then I'm just going to use my needle tool and go through it. Kind of adjust the shape a little bit and go back the other way. And there's my first cranberry. And then I will do that. I'll do, you know, I'm not doing same sizes. These cranberries that I've already made aren't the same size. So there's no reason the ones I'm making today. And you can see red gets everywhere. And there's that one. that one. So these are my unbaked and these are my baked and glazed. So, I mean, I made a few more the last time I made them, but that's how much I got out of that little piece of clay that I just conditioned. I'm gonna put a hole. And, the, you know, the roundness of the cranberry got a little bit off, so I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit with my fingers and kind of put it back into shape. But cranberries aren't completely round either. I have lots of things dropping today. My dogs are having issues. So I'm just going to go back through that hole from this side. Almost there, just a couple more. Okay. All right. 
and that's the cranberries. So all I'm going to do is put them, well first I bake on a piece of deli paper. You could use, you know, just a regular piece of photocopy paper if you wanted to. And I put that on my tile and I just put the things that I'm baking right on top of the tile too, including my little berries. And I'm going to go put these in my toaster oven at 275 and I'm going to let them bake for about an hour. And when they're done, I'll come back and show you how I paint on my popcorn and how I string and glaze my cranberries. For you, it'll be a second. For me, it'll be about an hour. Okay, so it's all out of the oven and cooled. We widened it out a little bit. And uh, yeah, not too bad. So first I'll show you what I do with the popcorn pieces and the ivory paint. I also have this um, gold color just in case I want some for the bottom but I found last time I didn't so let's see what we've got here I'll just take a paintbrush any paintbrush just happens to be the one I have over here and a tissue so I can dry some of the water off because I just put it in the water Okay, so I just get a little on my brush. I don't need a whole lot. And I just take this little piece of popcorn and just dab a little bit of ivory on there just to kind of tone down the white just a little. And I put some in the bottom too. And set it back down and do the same thing for these. Might be a little too much ivory on that one. Put a little here. Take my tissue and maybe blot a little bit off. And then this last one, I put a little ivory on. That's it for those. And I let them dry. And like I said, I may put a satin glaze on all of them. Um, but that is to be determined. Um, so I have a, a needle with just some regular thread all prepared. So I am just going to Find one I think has a smaller hole. Nope, not that one. Okay, well. I'm just going to take, see if this bead's got a big enough hole. Okay, well, I'll take the largest one and put that on here. And then I have it doubled, my thread doubled and knotted. So I'm just going to put my needle through it and that'll make that bead a stopper bead. And I'm just going to thread all of my cranberries onto my string. not going to do that. I just looped it through the loop at the bottom, but I think I'm just going to leave them straight like this. I didn't even put any beads in between them to buffer them because the shine does not have to be uniform. Um, I'm just going to take my 
Minwax Polycrylic and open the can up. Oh, I shake it a little bit. And then just pop this top because it's just a plastic can and a plastic lid. And then I'm going to get some paper towels. Because I'm messy. Okay, so here's our cranberries. I'm trying to get it up there so you can see. And I just dunk them in and then pull them out. And that's about it. Shake it a little bit to get some of it off. Let me take that paintbrush and knock some of it off to start with. And I'll come back to it. I'll let them hang and come back to them um, every little bit just to make sure to wipe off the drips. And then I just have a lamp and a clip and I just hang them off my lamp and clip clip them clip the string the string <laughs> so that uh, they just hang there over paper towel and drip so and that is the cranberries so let me let the cranberries dry and the popcorn and I will come back and string up a little bit of it so you can see what it looks like when it's put together. I'll be back. Okay, so it's actually the next day and everything is dry. And I had started to uh, crack these a little bit just so you could see that they stick together. Um, but I didn't do this, so. I just kind of break, you know, break the um, seal of the varnish where they kind of stuck together. No big deal. I mean, they're fine. So there's that. So then I just take my scissors and I will cut the string and take all my little cranberries off the rope. I just have to take the uh, thread out of the end of this bottom one. So there's that. That was my stopper cranberry. And you know these don't look bad. Cranberries in general are not uniform and uh, yeah I think these look pretty good. So Everything is dry. Everything is hard. Um, let me get my other set from before. And uh, I just have everything for this project in this box. And let's see, here's my other pieces of popcorn. And here are my other cranberries. And you can kind of see by this one that I had experimented with a darker paint and then decided I didn't like it. I mean, if you find something that you would like to edge your popcorn with to make it more realistic, that's great. Um, this is just the way I've elected to do it. Um, so, to dip these in varnish, the poly acrylic, I just used regular 
sewing thread. Nothing fancy. And a needle. And I threaded it and then I dipped it. So there's nothing different there. Now I do have, you could use wire if you wanted. Personally, I like to use spider wire, which um, is an eight pound test. It's crystal clear. It's not smoke. They come, do come in different shades. And it's meant for fishing line. Uh, you can buy fire line. Now, if I was going to, say, make jewelry that I was going to sell, I would probably use my fire line. But this spider wire will be great. It's not exactly easy to see. It's, like I said, crystal clear. Let's see if I put... I don't know if my beading... Yeah, you're not even going to be able to see it on my beading mat. Well, maybe. I'm just going to cast a little shadow. So there's my spider wire. Now, depending on what you're going to make, that's going to be how long you want your string. For my purposes today, I am just going to cut a short piece. It's maybe, I don't know, maybe 11, 12 inches long. I'm not going to keep this like this, so, yeah. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to, let's see, make some room. I think I'm going to take my cranberries and my popcorn and move them off to a beading mat and get my paper out of the way. And let me I'm trying to make sure I don't lose my <laughs> spider wire. Because it's even hard to see in person. And I have a container that's got some crystals and things in it. And I think I'm going to just for now, maybe put a small crystal at the end as a stopper. Let's see, I'll just use a green one. That's not level, so I'll just put it right there. Just a little tiny. And I'll close this box back up because if I don't close it back up, I will knock it down. And then you may just hear me cry. Okay, so now if I was, I'll show you what they look like just strung up. Um, just let me put a, a knot on the bottom of my spider wire so that everything doesn't just fall through. So if I was gonna store these, I probably wouldn't use a crystal at the end. I would probably use just a regular, you know, maybe even a acrylic bead just to, as a stopper. But for right now, I'll just use my little crystal that I pulled out. Cause that's the box I had the closest. Okay, so let's start with kind of a big cranberry. Oh, maybe we'll put another cranberry on. And there's that. And then I'll put a piece of popcorn on. I'll put this one on. It's kind of... larger. Let me move this tile and I'll pull my beading mat in. Okay, so there's, we're starting to string popcorn and cranberries. And we used to do this when my kids were young. I used to enjoy making plain like air popped popcorn and then stringing cranberries and popcorn 
put on the tree and we had a real tree so then when we put the tree outside after Christmas the birds and small animals would come and feast on the cranberries and the popcorn and my children used to love to see that now it's kind of like putting out a bird feeder you can because this is polymer clay intersperse this with other types of beads or crystals or what have you for this I'm just using the popcorn and the cranberries and I'm just picking them up and putting them on by ran in random order you could make a pattern you can do anything that you want And I find a lot of times, even when I say I'm not doing a pattern, I wind up doing a pattern because I guess nothing in life is truly random. And a lot of times, even when we try to be random, it's difficult. Spider wire makes it a little difficult to see where the thread is that's going in the holes. I got a lot of cranberries here. Could really use another couple of pieces of popcorn at this point. So anyway, and it looks like these holes are covered, so I won't use that one for now. I can just ream that out. getting there looks like my piece of string I cut was just about just long enough um, so this is probably how I would string these for the tree um, and if I was going to use these as beads for like necklaces or earrings, I would probably store these beads this way in a group in my bo in a box. Um, but yeah, there is popcorn and cranberries for a garland on an artificial Christmas tree. And so if I did make, which these are not as small as I would make them if I was... <clears throat> going to do earrings for instance um, but if I was going to make them into earrings I would probably just use an eye pen uh, uh, yeah just a regular um, flat head pin or a regular head pin I'll get it right I have a little bit of a headache going on so my words are not cooperating. You could also use an eye pin if you wanted to dangle um, a crystal or other beads below your cranberries or popcorn. Or you could just even put your cranberries and popcorn on more string and put it on the um, eye hook ear hook. <laughs> it is completely up to you. And I don't have, well, maybe I do have. I was thinking I didn't have a jump ring, but I do. They're a little bit big, but that's okay. So if I wanted to make an earring, say, I would take my pliers and, I don't know, maybe a piece of popcorn and you could put 
a bead cap. Let's see, I guess that'll do. So you could put a bead cap on the end of your popcorn, or you could even make a cranberry colored small bead or a flat bead or make your own bead cap to put on your popcorn. Um, this actually would look kind of cool as that kernel in the bottom of your popcorn. So, you know, you could do this so many ways. Um, for now, this is going to be the bottom of my earring. So, let's see. I don't think this will fall through. Let's see. Nope. So we'll put a cranberry on the bottom. Maybe I'll put this on top of that cranberry and then put the popcorn on. And then yeah, we'll put another cranberry on. And then I'll just take my, these are bent nose pliers. Normally I would use round nose pliers. I'll just take one of the cranberries off. See? Designing on the fly. So I'm going to just grab this here. just for fun. <laughs> 